While we were all enjoying our holiday break, package maintainers were dealing with chaos. What was broken? NPM unpublish. How could such core functionality of NPM just break? Oh boy, do I have the story to tell you today. Get ready for a wild ride. From silly tweets to left pad to a single character. Let's begin. Chapter 1. Everything 1.0. In 2015, Patrick JS published a pretty funny little package named Everything. What was it? Well, everything. Specifically, it had every single NPM package listed as a dependency. Only 22,000 packages at the time, but still absolutely hilarious. This joke quietly sat on GitHub and NPM, no issues whatsoever. But then someone tweeted about it. Specifically, Trash tweeted about it. And with that, we enter chapter two, everything 2.0. Once this joke went viral, Patrick jumped at the opportunity. Joining forces with Trash, they decided to modernize everything and have it depend on the now 2 million packages that exist on NPM. So how did they make that work? I brought a special guest on to explain. Hi, I'm Trash, and you may recognize me from the tweet you just saw. It wasn't until soon after that that we made a pretty dumb decision. So let's actually talk about how we pulled off the everything package. All right. And it turned out a lot of people weren't happy about that. But it also turns out we learned a lot of cool things about NPM. First, did you know that there's a roughly 800 dependency limit on a package JSON? And additionally, there's a size limit of around 10 megabytes. We didn't know that. We thought we could simply just list all the packages in one package JSON and call it a day. But you know, it turns out you just simply can't do that. So how do we get around this? How do we get around 800 dependency limit and the 10 megabyte size limit. Well, first it just comes down to chunking, right? So our first initial thought was, hey, let's just divide the package.json into multiple sub packages, right? And all of these are gonna roughly have 800 dependencies in them. But it turns out there's around 2.5 million packages published on NPM. So even if you did 800 per package.json, you would ultimately still end up with roughly around 3,000 sub packages. So then you have to actually chunk it up even more, which takes us to exhibit B. So you can see here we have chunk zero, chunk one, chunk two, and then sub chunks of just 800 dependencies. But it also turns out, unsurprisingly, that you actually get rate limited when you try to publish all these. So we had a GitHub action that was pretty much just running through our dependency tree and it would actually keep track of how far we got through publishing. So when we did get rate limited, we would sit there and wait an hour or so and then run the GitHub action again, which would pick up where we left off. And we had to do that around the clock. Meme driven development is real. All right, so we were on the clock. We were trying to get this thing out of there or out there. So after we got that, this is pretty much what our chat looked like when it came down to it. No one knew how, what was gonna happen. This was literally just experiments of us just hitting hurdle after hurdle and just seeing what would happen, right? Here, you can tell I don't have much faith here, but you can kind of see like the vibes in the room and you know, that's pretty much how everything was born. And it turns out, you know, and amongst finding out all these random quirky facts about how NPM works, um, we, ex we, we encountered some un unexpected consequences. And, you know, that's pretty much the TLDR on how everything was born. Thanks for the explanation, Trash. Now we need to talk about how this broke all of NPM. Before we do that, though, we need to take a tangent to another package. Chapter three, left pad. All the way back in 2015, LeftPad was created by a dev named Azure Kukulu. It would add spaces to the left of a string. That's it. Yet somehow, this package was depended on by thousands of projects and other packages. An important detail is that this wasn't Azure's only package. He actually had 252 of them. There's one other that was important to this story. A package named Kik, K-I-K. -I, I can't find a good report of what this package actually did beyond it being described as a bootstrapping tool for projects. There's another kick that's important here, though, a chat app. And they were not happy about this package. They actually reached out to Azure to ask if he would be down to transfer the package, and he refused. So they raised a trademark dispute with NPM. In March of 2016, NPM sided with the kick company, and the package was transferred to them. There was a catch, though. Very important detail. 
Normally, when a package is transferred, the new owner is expected to publish a new version. By doing this, the old projects depending on the old version won't break, and new installations will just use this new version. That didn't happen here, though. Azure, out of frustration with NPM, decided to unpublish every single version of every single package he had ever published. And this broke things. A lot of things. Way too many things. For a package that just adds spaces to the left of a string. I, I can't believe this is a real problem. And when I first saw it back in 2016, it was, it was a joke. But uh, this joke's come back to bite us, hasn't it? <laughs> Chapter 4. Saving left pad. To mitigate the hundreds of failures per minute, someone decided to publish an identical build of LeftPad. They made one crucial mistake, though. They published it as version 1.0.0. Why does that matter, though? Well, previously, LeftPad was on version 0.0.3. Now, I'm not much a math guy, but I do know that 0.0.3 is not equal to 1.0.0. This is a problem because everything using LeftPad depended on that older 0.0.3 version. So none of those projects could be built because they would install a version that doesn't exist. And since you can't publish a version older than your latest with NPM, there was no way to publish 0.0.3 again. To mitigate this, NPM republished an old package for the first time ever. They had to restore from a backup to do this, and there was no process whatsoever at the time. After nearly three hours of the stupidest outage ever, the package was restored, but it was clear that things needed to change. This was not sustainable for an ecosystem as important as NPM. And oh boy, did things change. Chapter five. NPM tries to fix things. On March 29th, 2016, NPM published their new policy around unpublishing packages. They acknowledged that the unrestricted ability to unpublish packages was dangerous, to say the least. And I agree. As stupid as LeftPad was, it proved an important point here. Their new policy had two big changes. Change one is that you can only unpublish a package within 24 hours of it being published. And change two, was that you cannot unpublish a package if any other packages depend on it. These changes absolutely hammered their support queues, so much so that in 2020, they actually revisited these policies. The way they sit now is as follows. You're allowed to unpublish your package if it has no package dependence in the NPM registry, it has fewer than 300 downloads per week, and it has a single owner or maintainer. One important detail though, they bumped that 24 hour window to 72 hours, and in that window, they actually only enforce one rule. It's that first rule that no other packages in the NPM public registry depend on it. Seems pretty reasonable, right? Well, let's talk about how they fucked it up. <laughs> Chapter six, star. Let's say I have two packages, package A and package B. Package A has no dependencies and it's on version 1.0. If nothing else depends on package A and it's getting less than 300 installs a month, I can unpublish it whenever I want. It doesn't matter how long it's been. But now let's introduce package B. Package B has a dependency on package A version 1.0. Once package B is published, I can no longer unpublish package A version 1. Doesn't matter how many hours have passed, package A version 1 is now on NPM forever. Everything so far, in my opinion, is relatively reasonable. But we're not reasonable, we're JavaScript developers. So let's talk about what happens if I publish a package version 2.0 on package A. Since package B relies on 1.0, not 2.0, I am actually able to unpublish 2.0. There is an edge case here though, an important catch that is going to be the theme of the rest of this video. What if package B didn't depend on version one or two of package A? What if instead B depended on version star? By making this one simple change, you have now made it impossible to ever unpublish any version of package A, either from the past or in the future. What the fuck? What the fuck? Ugh, this is this is why people make fun of us JavaScript devs. Like, I, who thought this was a good idea? Ugh, okay, calm down. I, I have a video to make. Okay. Chapter seven. Everything star. No, it's been a while. Remember that package from the beginning of the video? Remember how it depended on every package ever? Want to guess what version of those packages it depended on? Of course it's star. Why would I have just spent all of this time explaining all of this history from left pad? And blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> chill out. Anyways, by depending on version star for every package, they removed the ability to unpublish from every package. And since one of their sub packages depended on everything, 
they weren't even able to unpublish the package that caused all of these problems. They had put themselves in this cyclic dependency hell, preventing not just themselves from unpublishing, but everyone. They had disabled the unpublish button on NPM. <sighs> how, how did we get here? Chapter 8, The Aftermath. Since Patrick and Trash were normal people, they didn't know about this brutal edge case around Virgin Star. I certainly didn't know about it until I started researching for this video, and I can't imagine a lot of you did either. They immediately opened issues, wrote one about what was going on and what they were working on to fix it, and the results were depressing, to say the least. <sighs> Let's take a look at some of the stupidest comments I've ever seen. This was the first issue, again, cut by Patrick, the original creator, trying to detail what was going on. Sadly, the GitHub repo has been taken offline, so I am working off of image backups that I have of these posts, so forgive me for that. Hi all. First, just wanted to apologize about any difficulties this package has caused. We are working to resolve the issue, and we've contacted NPM regarding support with this matter. We appreciate your patience. I will say, Patrick went out of his way not just to contact NPM through traditional support methods, but reaching out to the people he knew that worked there and his mutual connections to try and get this fixed. He put a lot of effort in to both notify NPM about what was happening and try to get this fixed as quickly as possible. The major issue here is that when a package depends on another package of a specific version, that version can't be unpublished, which as I mentioned before, that makes sense. We've since realized there's an issue with star versions, AKA depending on any slash all versions of another package. Any version of that package is now unable to unpublish. As I previously mentioned, we reached out to NPM and we're hoping that they can either A, allow folks to unpublish when a package depends on the star version, B, to not permit star versions in published packages going forward, or as a last resort, Z, remove our NPM organization entirely, and with that, remove all of the packages that are blocking unpublishing. As far as we can tell, there is simply nothing we can do on our own. We can't unpublish the package ourselves because other packages depend on them. Publishing a new version over them doesn't change anything. I think this is a great response that gives a lot of context. Seems like others didn't agree though, because it got five downvotes. Why would anyone downvote this? Let's take a look at what they have to say. Hi, I want to delete my package, but I can't because it's a dependency of yours. Can you remove it from dependencies? I'm unsure why Angular RX QR code 2 is referenced here, but please remove it as it has been deprecated. Just curious, why are there repositories like this that install all NPM packages? And one of the other devs replied, we just thought it would be funny. We did not know all this would happen, which again, Normal people, even normal, well-experienced JavaScript devs could never have imagined this. I know I could not have believed this was a thing. Patrick followed up here saying that they could include an ignore, ignore list, but they cannot unpublish because everything depends on everything chunk three, which depends on sub chunk 2448. They can never unpublish everything because everything else in everything registry depends on it. NPM has to remove it since the star version is an edge case. And people just, the amount of not reading or processing what's going on in some of these replies is just so hilariously frustrating to me. And here's where the tone of these comments starts to go to shit. Please report this repository and corresponding package on npm.js. This is clearly abusing the registry in more than one way. Patrick again clarifying this is an edge case in npm's unpublished policy, not something that they're doing maliciously. And also, Boas, the other dev, clarifies they want to reiterate that they're not trolls, they're at worst QA testers for npm and at best comedians and creative coders. Wouldn't it be funny to npm install everything, they said? And so they did. This can be fixed with one line of code on npm's end to make an exception for us or for anyone else using the star version in their unpublished policy. And then we can all live in peace. Thanks for understanding everyone. Sorry for the inconvenience. And here's where things get even worse. I don't want to get tangled up in this project of yours, but why do you even think it's okay what you're doing? One, you're unnecessarily wasting resources. Two, nobody needs this. Three, it makes unpublishing impossible for everyone right now. Four, it will probably blow up a lot of registry mirrors that automatically download newly published versions of packages. I could care less because I'll be running my own NPM registry in the future, but you're making the whole Node.js community suffer for nothing. I can't even begin to fathom why any of you would think this is okay. <laughs> God damn it. And again, Patrick being incredibly polite about this, Want to work together on making a better NPM registry? We ran into a lot of issues even trying to download everything. We have a few ideas on how to make a better NPM. Can you not read? I literally said, I don't want to get tangled up in this project of yours. I don't care. And doing this project is certainly not the right way to communicate your ideas. Please keep me out of this madness. I like Bo's response here because he breaks down all of the reasons why this isn't a big deal. Every package they publish is only 20 to 30 kilobytes, which means they use a total of 60 megabytes of NPM storage space. That's smaller than the node modules folder on basically any node program. Think in terms of resources, this is fine. And yeah, I agree. Nobody needs this. 
Yes, but nobody really needs computers either. Fair point. It makes unpublishing impossible for everyone right now. We hadn't considered this until the issue was opened, and we regret this issue greatly, as I hope we've made clear. Luckily, NPM can easily fix this on their end, and we would on ours if we could. Again, I want to really emphasize this. Everything devs did everything right here. There's nothing here that they reasonably should have known or expected, and this was just a fun little gag. And now for my favorite issue. What the hell were you thinking? You know that if the issue is opened with that title, it's going to be good. <laughs> You guys have abused the public registry. You did so intentionally. You did so by deliberately spamming the registry with thousands of packages, seemingly to circumvent restrictions around an individual package JSON file being too large. If everything depends on every public package, and no public package can be unpublished if it has a public dependent, it stands to reason that you've single-handedly disabled unpublishing across the entire public registry for all existing packages. The people you've heard from, including me, are simply people who have already noticed. Congrats. You've discovered a genuine flaw in the registry. Now what? Do you think this far ahead? Or through your own reckless negligence, did you fail to realize that abusing the registry could have negative consequences for others? Thus far, you guys have failed to accept the blame for your actions, instead deflecting blame onto others. Well, guess who's here to deflect blame even further? These guys are not responsible for what happened here at all. And if you're mad that your package can't be unpublished to the point where you're writing an essay like this, harassing people over it, you're a bad developer, and I'm going to sit here and tell you that to your face, because this is pathetic and you should feel bad for writing it. Anyways, God, I can't believe he keeps going with this. These comments, the logical contortions and attempts to claim the moral high ground, are stupefying. You've deluded yourself into believing that the problem isn't that you abuse the registry, but that NPM's unpublished rules don't hold up to someone abusing the registry in this way. Actually, a really good point to transition, because I want to talk about why this actually happened. And surprise, surprise, the problem here isn't malicious actors. Chapter 9. NPM, do better. I actually reached out to NPM for comment, specifically asking if the issues around version star were fixed. The following is their response. We found the projects to be in violation of GitHub's acceptable use policies, which prohibit behavior that significantly or continually disrupts the experiences of other users. It was also found to violate the code of conduct, we have resolved the dependency issues so packages can now be removed if they meet our unpublished criteria, and we've removed the package from both the NPM registry and from GitHub. At this point in time, NPM doesn't seem to believe there is an issue here. If I had never seen this problem before, you might have been able to convince me. But sadly, this isn't the first time I've seen it. One of my favorite packages, React Query, was affected by this all the way back in 2022. Since React Query is really popular, they have a lot of packages that depend on them, many of which just blindly depend on version star they'll never be able to use unpublish again. And that sucks, because even if they use the tags correctly, like latest and default, they can publish the wrong version accidentally. And if that happens, which for them, it did, they accidentally published to the wrong namespace, they can't do anything about that. They will never again be able to unpublish the thing that they published there, even if they try to within half an hour of the mistake happening. The official response from NPM in this issue? Just publish a new version. Yeah. Mistakes happen. The policy should account for that. By treating Patrick as a malicious actor, NPM is shifting blame away from the absolutely terrible policy they have here. I want to be clear. NPM, I love y'all. I know everyone loves to complain about the state of packages in the JavaScript ecosystem, but for the most part, they're wrong. Either that or they've just never used pip before. This policy is a gross overreaction to the left pad stuff that happened all the way back in 2016. It gives ammunition to the haters, and it makes life harder for open source maintainers. And I'm genuinely sad to see the response that I've seen here. And for everyone else watching, please be kind. Don't harass anyone at NPM. And God, do not harass Patrick or any of the other maintainers. They're the good guys here. They did everything in their power to handle this well, and the world around them was against it. Do whatever you want to trash, though. I don't give a shit. <sighs> Peace, nerds. Wow. Yeah. <sighs>